Buenos días. Uh, quería empezar en español agradecer, para agradecer a la, organiza, la organización del Congreso por invitar y, y tenemos esta oportunidad uh, uh, de presentar nuestro trabajo con uh, genómica en ganado Hereford en Brasil. Um, I'll, uh, I'll speak in English. I, I thought most of you would not understand Portuguese, so uh, uh, and I think it would be easier for me. Uh, so we've seen so far uh, um, many uh, examples and uh, opportunities to use uh, genomics and molecular information to uh, improve uh, cattle uh, in different ways. Uh, what we're going to show here is the work that we've been doing with uh, the Brazilian uh, Hereford and I would say Braford too because the white faces are worked together in, in Brazil, but I'll, I'll focus on, on the Hereford in, in this presentation. Um, I think all of you know that crossbreeding with British breeds and Hereford is, Hereford is a very good example, is a way to fast improve uh, early mature or uh, early pregnancy, early finishing, uh, and especially meat quality of the zebu populations. If we look at this map in Brazil, we have about 80 million uh, zebu cows located in the tropical area. Uh, now, the feasibility of large-scale use of this technology is limited, especially if one thinks that 90% of reproduction is done by service bulls, and maybe 10% with uh, fixed-time insemination is uh, through AI. Uh, uh, it's limited by the higher susceptibility of taurine breeds in general to ticks, especially ticks, but also other external parasites, and to the heat and the solar uh, radiation. So uh, our application of genomics started uh, thinking in terms of this problem, especially the ticks, uh, because as you know, to get phenotypes uh, for ticks, we need to let animals be per, uh, to carry parasites, and there is a risk of, oh, there is a decrease in production, there is also a high risk of uh, um, disease and death. So this is a candidate uh, uh, trait because it's very difficult to measure in the traditional uh, systems and in traditional evaluation programs. So uh, we merged, uh, we combined efforts uh, from Embrapa, my institution, the Delta G Connection, which is a breeding group of Herford and Braford breeders in Brazil. Uh, GeneSys is their con uh, genetic uh, uh, consultants. And with the support of the Brazilian Herford and Braford Association, uh, we combine quantitative and molecular tools for selection of, uh, for tick resistance and other adaptation traits. Uh, so we heard about reference populations, and uh, so we built this uh, population with phenotypes and genotypes for our uh, Brazilian Hereford and Braford. And, and one cannot underestimate the work that was to build this population. And we, we are very thankful to the breeders because all of these tick counts were done in farms by the producers or their technicians, their trained technicians. We, uh, as from last year, we had more than 5,000 animals with phenotypes, and that means two to three counts per animal, uh, so mo more than 12,000 uh, records, and uh, about 1,600 of these were uh, Hereford animals. These animals were also scored for eye pigmentation and hair coat, and we extract DNA for almost 4,000 animals and for the most influential sires. And we work with the, for the, for most of the animals with the 51, uh, with the 50K chip and ended up with, after quality control, with uh, 41,000 markers to use in, in our genomic application. These are some pictures of the training of the farmers and uh, some uh, meetings that we've done during the course of this project. 
This is also the, the, the scores that the animals got, so from absent eye pigmentation to full pigmentation, and then also for hair coat in a scale also one to three from uh, the sleek or very short uh, hair animals and to the ones that even in the summer carry uh, winter-like uh, uh, coat. Uh, so not going to enter into the details of the methodology that was done previously by other uh, researchers here. Uh, but here what we have is a comparison using traditional uh, genetic evaluation and uh, genomic evaluations. We compare several different methods to estimate marker effects and to combine this information. In our case, the single step uh, methodology that uh, Nacho Aguilar just presented was the best option. So that's the results I'm presenting here. But we get, this is the traditional uh, accuracy, and then this is with, uh, with genomic information. So we get gains from 38 to 84 percent, and the most benefit was for tick resistance, and that's because of the effort in phenotyping the animals. Um, so with this, we, we had a, a tool to select animals without exposing them to the ticks. We already published two sire summaries uh, for Hereford and Braffords, so, and there are all the most influential sires used in Brazil are genotyped and uh, are part of these publications, and we're going to update that this year. Uh, sires from Uruguay, from Argentina, from U U.S., all, of, all places of the world that are used through AI in Brazil are in these uh, evaluations. Now, we got to this point, and with the 50K panel, uh, which costs about $50 for us in, in a low scale, uh, they we, we reached to a point that the producer said, well, that's too expensive to use in routine evaluation and to, uh, pheno uh, to genotype all the animals that we have as se selection candidates. So what's the current work that we are doing? In alignment with what was said before, we are uh, studying the genome of the animals and looking for the segments that are most influential or most important in explaining the, the genetic difference between animals. And this is the example for the tick resistance. Uh, this is each part of the genome, and the highest is the peak here. Most influential is that region on the genome. And in each of these regions, we look at the most important markers and select them. And build a reduced panel that can be genotyped in a different technology with a much lower cost. So that was the, the goal of this work. So for example, for tick resistance, we reached uh, 58 markers, and uh, we'll see in the next slide what was the accuracy that we got. Here uh, we have uh, the four traits that I'm talking about, eye pigmentation, hair coat, at weaning, and earling and T counts. And we had comparisons of two panels, the full panel with the 41,000 markers and the reduced panel for each trait. The panels are specific for each trait. And we used two, two methods, one that considers all the markers at the same time, but in, uh, it selects the ones that are more influential in each cycle of the, the, the evaluation. And just using the, the reduced panels. What I want to say, regardless if the populations are more similar or distant when we do the validation, the cross-validation of these panels, the accuracies using the reduced panel were even higher than using the full information. So selecting only the ones that really matter to the traits, we get higher accuracies and with a genotyping cost much lower uh, than uh, with the full panel. So uh, what, we, what we are also doing to add value is to include additional phenotypes and phenotypes that are difficult to, to measure. We are currently working with tick-borne disease, which are a big problem in Brazil. And hopefully this year we will pass 2,000 animals evaluated. And also for the pink eye and the eye cancer, uh, we are starting on phenotyping animals for that. Uh, with that, and combining with parentage, uh, breed composition, and other traits, we think we can build very low-density 
panels with added value and that will be, uh, I mean, commercially uh, attractive to our producers. So uh, the advantage, summarizing, the, the advantages for the producers are, uh, of course, what was shown, uh, shown, the increased accuracy of uh, EBVs by combining uh, the genomic information, but also, I think, working with traits that are not currently in the genetic evaluation programs, we can give an opportunity to build uh, specific or distinguished lineages of cattle. For example, if a producer has a Hereford that is uh, noticeably more resistant to ticks, he can have a big differential in the market, and that can be true for other traits, especially for the ones that are not currently evaluated. So that's, I think there is a big opportunity for reproduction to the disease resistance and other uh, adaptation traits. Beef quality, I think, will come in the future, but currently in Brazil is not the main focus uh, uh, of our work. And of course, we'll need to develop for our country, and I think it's not gonna be different for, for Uruguay and other places, is to develop efficient business models where we have a lower cost of genotyping and uh, perhaps the, the low density panels will be a very good alternative for that. That was what I want to show. Uh, this work was done by, by many people and the producers are key, the, the breed associations. Uh, with Nacho, we work a lot on the methods and also several students and, and the, the funding agencies. Thank you very much and uh, I'll be glad to discuss with you. I'll be here for the... Uh, until tomorrow and then to share this information and discuss with you. Thank you very much for the opportunity.